Hello, are you guys there? I went live, but uh, it said it was still waiting for me, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. So let me know that if you can see me. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm having some weird stuff with YouTube today. <laughs> it says one person was waiting for the stream, so let's see. Let me know if you can see me and hear me. I can see me and hear me on Twitch, so um, let's see. If you guys can see me and hear me. What is this? What is this? Click to read. Who is my missing information? Please be sure to click save right before. Oh, okay. Save broadcast before every stream with my. Okay. I don't know what that is. So. All right. Can you guys see me or hear me? Anyone? Anyone? Hi, Megs. Hi, Karen. Okay. You guys can see. You guys can see me then. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, this is the least favorite part of, of streaming. Like, I love streaming with you and being with you and everything. And um, I am happy to learn about all this video stuff. Kind of happy. <laughs> but the fact that I have no one to sit there and say, um, this is how to do this, is so frustrating. You know what I mean? Okay. It's acting funny on YouTube, Megs. Yeah. Hi, Sojoy. Hi, Joyce. Okay. So um, I actually went live at 11 and um, I could tell something was up and then I went to YouTube and it said one person's waiting for you to go live. I was like, but I am live. <laughs> so I ended the stream and started again. Okay, so this is the other weird thing that's happened to me today is um, I went to YouTube to get a link for one of the videos because I was updating my um, page and I um, noticed that I was live. I was like, wait a minute, I'm not live right now. And so I booted up my streaming computer, the one that I use just for streaming. That's all I use it for, it's brand new. And it said, I was live. And I was like, what the heck, how am I live? So I ended the stream. I asked Brooke, hey, did you get a notification? She said, no, I didn't. And, and now it was, it was so it was, I was live and it was replaying my live stream from yesterday. So it was a replay. And now I can't find that video. And that was the whole like construction of the jeans. These jeans are kind of cursed with YouTube right now, I think. So, anywho, welcome. How are you guys? That's my saga. I sew really good with the video thing. Still figuring that out. So, um, how's this lighting for you guys? Would you like it a little lighter? I admit I was kind of focused on setting up other cameras for the rest of the stream because we're going to add the tack button, the buttonhole, the waistband. Um, we're going to do a few things today. And so I just wanted to make sure that um, all the cameras were set up properly. So, so just let me know if you can see and hear me okay. I don't know what this is right here. Help. <laughs> Okay, so that looks a little washed out. Is that a little too washed out? What do you guys think? Just tell me, because I can darken it up. It's gonna get, yeah, thank you, it's gonna get better. I just wanna sew. <laughs> and on top of that, I got my hair cut yesterday and my bangs are like, I don't know what the heck's going on here, but I'm feeling a little 70s. So, I mean, you know, it happens. So, Hopefully the, um, it's been really, Karen, thank you for saying that. It has been really special the last month. That is a great way to put it. For, I think for me, the problem too, is that because I upload this, I, I like, as I stream, it's uploading onto YouTube and then I allow YouTube to save it on there as an uploaded video, right? So it's all in one. Whereas a lot of live streamers don't save their videos. It's just like they live stream and then that's it. And maybe they upload other videos in between. But I know my live streams are really the content that we're kind of going after. And um, I, I don't know, I just feel like things have been really different lately. And maybe I can't just download my stream every time, you know? I don't have infinite space for that. So I really hope that the whole first part of these jeans is on there still. Because we lost the, um, the stream crashed in the middle of doing the prototype. Remember that? Bangs are ready. <laughs> uh, I like how short they are right here. But um, this is the thing is like, you know, I don't care. 
I cut all kinds of things. I don't cut hair. I mean, you guys have seen me cut my bangs here on stream because I don't put up with them being in my eyes. But at the same time, I don't cut my hair. I don't cut people's hair. And so when my hairdresser every time asks me, so what are we doing with your bangs? I'm always like, don't you know that? I don't know. I don't know what the options are. I don't know. I just want you to be like, this is what you need to do. And this is going to be optimal for you. You know what I mean? She doesn't sound like that at all, by the way. Hi, Jilly. How's it going? You're on Twitch. I love all the people on Twitch today. Is YouTube being that much of a brat that you guys are all on, on Twitch? So, um, oh, I hope my video is not gone from yesterday, you guys. I would be so sad. I felt like this was a really good sew through. Need to get your haircut soon. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, yeah. Well, being here live has its has its benefits, I guess, huh? So, yeah. Let me get rid of. I want to get rid of this window here. I don't know why. It's like there's no refresh chat. I'm gonna say that. Let's see. I don't know. There's nothing there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one thing I've learned about hair is that frequent haircuts actually are the thing to do if you want to grow it out, too. My grew, mine, grew, mine grew out really fast once I just went every eight to nine weeks and had it trimmed. Every eight to nine weeks, no matter what. All right, um, so you guys, I'm really excited about these ash jeans. They came together really well yesterday. Um, so we have the front and the back complete. Um, you guys voted on giving me a magical butt. I really appreciate that, by the way. Um, and then they're connected in the inseam, and we did the top stitching there. And now we have the side seams, the waistband. Um, I hope so, Bo. I hope so. It should be there. And I sent, I did send in a little um, blurb saying, hey, um, this is there. I know. So... So I don't know if you heard what I said earlier, but when I went, I was actually on my website and I was updating all the links to the videos. So it's easy to find like the cutting video, part one, part two, and they're all like right there and you just click it and it goes to it. And I know when I went to YouTube to get one of the links, it said I was live and I was like, I'm not live right now, am, am I? I was on a totally different computer and everything. So I went over here, booted this computer up and sure enough, it said live. And um, I, so I was like, okay, well, let's end that. And it was playing my stream from yesterday. And so it went live, it was live for like 22 minutes. So, you, you're to, you're, really? <laughs> That's nice, Megs. You know, I didn't know, had no idea I was going gray when I went gray. It happened really young for me. I'm only 48. I'm just going with it. Yeah, so I hope. I hope Boaty, Beauty, Beauty Bear. I get it now. Terry, hello. Sewing. That is exactly what Brooke said, Karen. She said sewing fairy. Um, ah, you had trouble too? Yeah, I'm having troubles today. I am having troubles. There's a lot of people on Twitch today. I think that's why. YouTube's being a real big brat. But YouTube, I love you if you really want to find that video that I did yesterday. <laughs> so. oh, thanks, Megs. I know, I'm really happy with them. I'd be really sad if that whole front first half of the video is gone, you know? I don't even want to think about it. I was, it, was so, it was stressing me out so much the few minutes before I went live. And then you guys weren't there when I went live. I was like, what is going on here? Um, so I just, let's just let's start sewing. So you guys. Here's the deal. If my stream crashes and I don't notice and you're like, where'd she go? Why'd she end the stream? I, you know I'm going to say goodbye before I end, right? So I'm not going to just be like, blurp, and go away. Just if you guys comment on a YouTube video that's already uploaded, it'll pop up on my phone and I'll know. So that's our backup plan, right? That's our, that's our safety route. So in fact, let me make sure my phone is um, quiet. Yeah. So I have it sitting here. I can see if you guys are like... Yo, you're not live. So, yeah, me too. My little lightning and uh, the, the flamingo. So this was the, um, the tummy panel that I did with that's a single layer of fabric and I feel like it's gonna work out really good. I already did it on another pair of Ash jeans that are right here. I moved over here to get the buttons and buttons on. So I finished these up um, the day before I made these others. 
for my high school reunion and um, I did the tummy panel on these and it worked really good so and you know it's not gonna like make me a size smaller it just smooths things puts them into place you know so all right let's get going here um, I need to rethread my machine I was playing a little bit of thread chicken and then I realized oh you should just get a new spool so let's see if I can thread my thread tree on camera. Hi, Elaine, you found us. Did you have trouble? We're having a lot of troubles today. So Usually I pull my thread through, but I was like, you know, you're playing a little bit of thread chicken there, so maybe you should just cut it. And then I was like, yeah, that's, that's too bit of chicken. I, you need a new spool. <laughs> Thankfully, I have a couple more. So I have to thread it the traditional way. And on an industrial machine, you have to go through a lot of holes. It's not just like a home machine where you kind of go back and forth, which is kind of fun, you know? What did I just do there? So what are you guys up to? Let's focus on some positive stuff, some sewing. Yeah, right, Megs? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't miss anything, Ray. I had so much trouble getting on here. You, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you know, Megs, I was thinking the same thing, actually. The, this denim is so stretchy, and you could actually um, cut probably an inch and a half off the top of the pants, put a fake fly in it, and then, um, like, like, don't put a real fly in. Sew these the rest of the way, but, like, probably remove, like, an inch and a half, and then a wide pull-on waistband. I think actually you could do that pretty easily. It's worth it's worth trying. I, I promise it doesn't take me five minutes to thread my machine, but when you guys are watching me, can you guys just look away for just a second? Oh my gosh, just don't look. Yeah, Terry, oh, you got an XL cutting mat, nice. Um, there's a long thread hanging off my Plus, it's kind of dark. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go turn a light on too, you guys. I may have to adjust the brightness. Do you see my hands shaking right now? It's because I was so worked up about the video. It's not worth it. It's just a video. It's just a video, relax. All right, let's see how to do here. In the grand scheme of things, we're doing okay. I missed something. Oh yeah, I missed something big time. What I miss? What I miss? That's funny. Sorry, we gotta do this again, cause uh, that that was not okay. That was not acceptable. Terry, I'm so impressed by this suit coat. That was really cool. Do you think you'll make another one after that? Like once you get that one the way you want it, do you think you'll do like multiples? Ah, oh, that's so smart, Karen. I did that once, and people say they still use them. <laughs> Pretty cute. I still have one of mine that I that I made. All right, let's try this again. Maybe my maybe it's my bobbin. Maybe I didn't even need to rethread that. Let's check. Looks okay. It's good just to pull it out and do it again. Everything looks okay there. You know, ooh, maybe I need to do an offering to the sewing fairy. Okay, we're good. All right, let me turn on the light real quick. It's gonna probably get a little bright for a second. That's why the lighting wasn't that great was because the um, overhead light was off. So let's let's tone this down a tiny bit. Give you guys some you know definition. Let's crank up the sharpness. I feel like the sharpness helps helps focus it a little bit. How's that? Watch amateur videographer so live. All right, 
Let's do this. All right, so we're doing the side seams, and um, you don't typically top stitch all the way down on the, the side seams. You just do up through the pocket, which is kind of nice. That's why you do your inseam first when you remember to, because sometimes I forget. I'm going to start at the top, and it's 5 eighths inch, 5 eighths inch seams on the ash jeans. So I've been pretty good about remembering, I'm happy to say, because sometimes I'm not so good about remembering things like that, and they revert to half inch. <laughs> Sewing is so calming for me. I know it doesn't, a lot of people don't feel that way, but, um, uh, you know. I used to have trouble sleeping. Like after I had my daughter a long time ago, I had a lot of trouble getting to sleep and staying asleep. And one of the tricks I learned was um, I would pretend to sew something together or I would work on a, like a problem um, that I was having trouble figuring out pattern wise, like when I worked at the like technical companies and I was like hmm you know how could I do this what if I tried this what if I tried that and and um, I, I wasn't actually looking for like I mean I was looking for solutions but at the same time I was falling asleep right so I wasn't like recording it um, and that really helped me but now if I do that it keeps me up it's so weird now if I sit there and troubleshoot a sewing thing it really energizes me, so I don't really do it anymore. I don't have a lot of trouble falling asleep either, which is great. That plagued me for so long. Flamingo. Why isn't there a flamingo emoji? I really thought there was one, you guys. You know? Oh, I remember the other weird thing about YouTube um, is that I couldn't see myself on there and I learned that I had to delete all of the bookmarks, cookies, history, all of it so that I could see myself again. And that was really frustrating because it took me a couple of weeks to figure it out. I kept trying and I kept Googling it and um, that was something. So, Because, you know, YouTube's changing over to a, a different format ever so slowly and so I think what they're doing is changing like the paths of things I don't really understand all that stuff it's just how I how I've formulated the internet to work in my head <laughs> so yeah now it would have been easier for me to like top stitch that one while I had, you know, one side seam still uh, uh, open, but if they're actually really not too hard to do, and I suggest leaving your, your pants inside out when you go to do it, and then you're going to top stitch the side seam here on the back side to the bottom of your pocket, you know, right there. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take a gander up our other pattern pieces, especially the, the belt loops, because um, I'm about to have the top stitch thread on and I thought it would be kind of nice to have, um, do all the top stitching at once, right? So, so let's see, I'm not, let's see how she does her carriers because I wanna um, try and do them the same way she is and the way I was about to do it was sew it in a tube, turn it right side out. Oh, we have that other, we have that new loop turner, you guys. But how does she do it? Finish one side. Oh, I didn't do it that way. I don't have one side finished. Put the rods and close with finish it. Okay. So I don't have one side of my belt loop um, finished, like surged, and I unplugged my serger because I moved it in my machine. So I think I'm just gonna do it a different way. I'm just gonna sew this and I'm gonna do my best to turn it right side out. Has anyone used one of these? Has anyone used one of these? Because this is how I usually turn my loops, is with this guy here. Tell me. Because we could try this. I'm kind of curious. Should we try it? All right, let me sew my seam 
here. Um, I'm going to try and do a little, I don't want too wide of a belt loop, but I can't turn something if the seam allowance is all the same. Uh, but I think I changed my seam allowance there. Oh, that's not bad. That's how wide my belt loop will be. Is that a little too wide, you guys? That's a little too wide. All right, I'm gonna do it again. How wide do I want this? I kind of want them like three eighths. All right, so let's um, let's try this. So has anyone used one of these? You guys have mentioned it to me before. Let's try it. All right, so what what is this? There's like different spaghetti scrunchies closing here. I think like this one. Um, there's three different widths. You guys are still there, right? <laughs> you guys are really quiet. All right, how do we do this? Step one, place any tube all the way inside the sewn item. All right, this is not gonna fit in there. All right, so let's try the other one. Let's try the smallest one, which I bet is for spaghetti straps. All right. Let's try it. Place any tube all the way through. Like all the way through. Grasp the protein into the fabric. Wait, with the course my rod push into the tube. Wait, am I placing the tube all the way inside the sewn item? So just like a little bit, huh? Like this? Let's score my rod, push the fabric into the tube until it protrudes out this opposite end of the tube. Ooh. Um, oh, here's the rod. Oh, I don't, I already don't like this. Wait a minute. Have any of you done this? You guys still there? You guys aren't there, are you? <laughs> oh wait, maybe. I, it's like the, 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 this part's moving inside there and it won't stay. I'm gonna check to see if you're there. Yeah, you're, you're, I mean, I'm there on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, okay, you guys are still there. You're just being quiet, aren't you? Okay, so I can see how it wants to work. With the corresponding rod, push the fabric into the tube until it pushes out the opposite end of the tube. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think you have to have the scrunched on here. Okay, too thick. This isn't gonna work for this, I think. I'm gonna try my loop turner. The worst case scenario, I will just do what I, you know, like, just edge stitch it. This is a little bit thick for this. I could trim my seam allowance, but um, it, it's, it's definitely wide enough to accommodate it. Oh, but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna trim it. Let's try it. You know, in the industry, they have a machine that makes these. Of course, right? Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys have been chatting. My thing wasn't scrolling, I'm so sorry. My thing was stuck way back on making re reusable grocery bags. You're in a storm hurricane mode? Oh my gosh, Elaine. <laughs> You're getting back to quilting.
You'll absolutely make more suit coats. Awesome. Oh. A pillowcase with the burrito method. Explain. What What do you mean me? I know the burrito method with people use that on like uh, the backs of shirts, right? So. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Please be the guinea pig. What happened at the post office? I prevailed. Cause you know what I did, Jilly? I walked in, I set the packages on the counter and I walked out. <laughs> and then today I got a big old box from Hearts Fabric from my post office guy, my postal carrier, my post office guy. And I was like, yo, um, what's the best way to do this? He said, I'll just take them to the UPS store. They'll take it. I was like, thank you. Yeah, the, the fa this fabric's a little thick, but it's working. So uh, actually my rule usually is once it pokes out this end, I grab it by the fabric rather than the loop turner because that thing's a little delicate. I've only had one fail like after using it for 15 years, but still. All right, so here we go. Here's my carriers. Sorry I'm not like a technical person. Why isn't my things auto scrolling? Yeah, mine has a little hook at the end too. Exactly. <laughs> oh, interesting, Terry. I might have to look at that. I love seeing all the different sewing techniques. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? I love it. I, there was a time in my life where I would be a little intimidated and a little bit threatened, you know, by seeing someone like better than me or whatever and just being like, you know, I don't know, I don't know how to do that, and they do, and I should know how to do that. And then I started thinking about it, I was like, how could you know everything? Plus, like, everyone's learned sewing in different parts of the world, and we've all come to different ways of doing the same things, you know? Thank you, Megs. I know I shouldn't stress. I'm actually, for the most part, I'm not, I'm not very, I'm not even gonna say that I'm not a very stressed person. I'm not, I'm actually pretty chill on certain things, but, I don't, I really like presenting a nice polished thing, you know? So, um, what else can I top stitch? I could do my hems, because I actually checked and these are gonna work. So let's do that. So let's do the hems, the belt loops, the side seams, and then we're gonna attach the waistband. Hip, hip, hooray! Okay. So I'm using like the jeans, I'm not using that spool. Good thing I have another one because that one just fell on hot lava. Here's this one. At my house it's called Loki Lava because of my puppy and anything on the ground falls prey to Loki. If you're a cat, you're a dog, whatever, you know? <laughs> you're a toon toy. <laughs> At here it's called Lent Lava which is actually a command in the chat, Lent Lava, you know? Um, basically that one is dead to me because it just fell under the table in front of me, so. All right, let's see how the stitching is here. Not bad. I find I have to adjust the top thread a little tighter. Um, so you can kind of see a little bit, like on the first pass you can, oh that's a dot on the fabric. I don't think you can actually see anything on this side, but this side, these are the two I did. You can see my orange thread poking through to the bobbin, which means it needs to be tighter. It's just a quirk of the top stitch thread, you know? Um, and if I adjusted it so much that little black dots of my thread were showing on the top, that wouldn't be such a bad, thing because it would blend in on the fabric. You're trying for a really good balance, but these two thread weights are so different from each other. You're just looking for something that's consistent and not too out of whack, you know? So is that the same storm that was in Florida, Elaine? Stay safe. That's a bummer. <laughs> Okie dokie, okie lava. Yeah, yeah, you know. 
All right, let's do our carriers first because I'm kind of rubbish at doing two perfectly straight edges. So I just turn this so that the seam is on the edge. I could try and put it down the center, but the seam inside is not going to open up and stay flat because remember I did two rows of stitching. So, you know. Oh, yeah, it's Dorian. Yeah, that's what I thought. Dang, Elaine. Dorian just won't give it a rest. So I'm going to put the seam on the on the edge here on the side um i i will say like when i do things like this like tubes i really like the seam being in the middle only because that means the edges are going to be the same as each other as far as how they're going to react to the stitching <laughs> i love the storm emojis that little wind one cracks me up um and when i do this one what's going to happen is this side with the seam is is really stable because of the seams and the stitching is going to line up and and it's going to be nice you know this side will be nice too but it's probably going to do this whole thing's going to curve like this because this side doesn't have as much stability it doesn't have the seam and so it's going to stretch a little bit so i just try and maintain it best i can all right so this edge is pretty much all consistent. So I'm just gonna try and keep it as straight as possible like this and not move my hands. I really hate seeing my finger and I'm really sorry it looks so terrible right now. The machine wants to sew straight. So if I don't assume it's not straight and try and correct it, it's better. So at the end it kind of veered to the left. The first pass always looks good. <laughs> um, I'm going to start from this end and go the same direction, hoping for. Right, let's try this again. The seam allowance inside is trying to push the presser foot off the left edge. Yeah, don't do that. Hopefully you can kind of cut around some of the spots that look a little wiggly. This looks pretty darn good. Because remember, they're just going to be in little like three and a half inch lengths. And um, next, they're not right next to each other. Let's see. It said three and a half in there, so I'm going to do them a little bit shy. But look at my stitches. Look at that. So if you had that twin needle thing I keep mentioning, you'd be pretty stoked to use it on this thing. Because look at my stitches. These are closer together than these. These are fatter and chubbier, and these are shorter. You see that? That's just because um, there's more stability and thickness over here, less over here. This is only two layers. This is four layers. And the thread's just going to act differently. Ooh. Ooh, Karen, that isn't okay. One, two, three. Uh-oh. Let's just split this one in half, three inches, and then um, I can make all these three inches if I need to, which I probably just will. One, two, three, four. Oh, I only needed five. Shoot, I should have just done one at three and a half. I don't know why I got confused there. Yes, kids, I'm having some funky issues with YouTube right now and maybe Twitch. I don't think Twitch though. Yeah, it said I was live today and it was playing my live stream from yesterday. And I was like, what the heck? Where'd that, where did they, why are they live streaming? And it even said it in Streamlabs that I was streaming live. Now I can't find that video from yesterday. So I'm a little nervous. I hope it's still there. All right, let's sew our uh, top stitch our side seam here. And like I said, you just need to go to the end of your pocket. You can do the whole out seam if you want. It's going to get a little um, tricky when you get closer and closer down to the hem. But it's not impossible. I've done it before. I just did it on my uh, the jackrabbit pants, mainly because that fabric is so lightweight. I thought that would be kind of nice to smooth out the side seam. It'll help with less ironing as well. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. And then I went live. Really, kids? It said I was live last night, too? How weird. Usually it tells me every time I'm live. I get an email. I didn't get any such email. 
There we go. Uh, you can put a bar tack right here. I just back stitched kind of long, but let's do a little more. I like doing this because it's proof that you actually don't need to bar tack. Bar tacking is just zigzag stitches that are close together like a buttonhole. Oh, sorry, that is so bright, you guys. Sorry. Let's do the other um, side seam. Try and keep some pants on there. It's the black. Yeah, you tried to watch it. You could, yeah, so I don't know what's going on. That's not me doing that, you guys. I'm really sorry. Oh, you just ordered some uh, twin needles. Ooh. What's the other thing you're working on, Terry, besides the suit coats? You said something else. I felt like it was something for you, right? I'm just feeling for the end of my pocket right here. I can feel it right there. My home machine does not like this thread. I will not be doing my buttonhole in this thread. So, pea coat. All right, nothing for you though. Yeah, that's weird. We lost focus and watched the kittens that are three days old. So, oh my goodness. That would be fun. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna do my hems now. So actually, I think I will leave them right side. And I think I'm gonna have to iron them. So I'm gonna stitch my hems from the right side since I'm not using a bobbin with the top stitch thread. I'm only using the top, so I have to do it from the top. Look how stretchy that is. It's pretty stretchy. This fabric is so stinky though. All right, so let's... um. Let's make sure the iron is heating up. It's pretty warm already. And we have our belt loops. We did our side seams. We just need to do the hems and then we can do the waist. Hello, Lisa, you found us. We're having all kinds of trouble today. Let's go to the iron. Oh, so the pea coat is for one of your sons. Let's see where, this is the side seam right here. And we want it to go this way. But we know, like when we look at this, we top stitch that on the front. Like we just remind ourselves, oh, you top stitch it on the front. So the side seam goes away from the front. I kind of just let it fall where it wants to by trying to get it as even as possible. And you can tell right here, it's not even. See that? I could, I could trim it up, but it's not necessary. I'd rather know where it all wants to fold. This is a little bit more accurate. We could trim a little bit of these hairs off. Those are all the elastic. Do you want to make a pin cushion, Megs? Do you want the pie pin cushion? I should check out that pattern and see, see how it is. That would be kind of a fun little project. Let's just iron this once and then fold it again. I had to wait so long to take my picture of my pants yesterday because my iron dropped all this water on them. <laughs> like, okay. Okay, buddy. Let's trim this a tiny bit right here. this to behave better. Yeah, that's that's what I want. 
it's having trouble going over this fold. So I'm gonna trim this off, not to even it up, but really just to give it less fight against the seam right there. I'm trying to make it shallower so that when it folds, this part right here is taking up that edge that I just trimmed off. Kind of like the kerf in um, woodworking that we've talked about, you know, that thickness. This is a little wider than I want. This is wider than I want. Oh, nice, Lisa, you were lurking. <laughs> the go big or go home, right? I know. I feel like I did that with knitting and sewing. I always find it funny when we're new, how much we sew for or do things for other people. Whatever the new hobby is, we always do like gifts for people. It's so funny because it's, it's when we're least skilled at it, but we want to share. We're so excited with it. And we're like, Ooh, I have something new I can make for people. You know, it's kind of funny. And then I look back and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I made that for you. I really didn't know what I was doing when I did that. <laughs> And now I'm like, I don't have time to do things for other people. I just want to do it for me. <laughs> I'm making this shallower. I don't really want the hem to be much over like five eighths finished, especially visually. I don't want them to look like slacks, you know? Uh, really, Terry? You haven't made anything for you? That's funny. I think in knitting it's great because, you know, hats and scarves and things like that, all the scarves are kind of tedious. Um, they are really great learner projects. And, and really maybe your, skill, your skills will improve over time, but at the same time, looking back on a hat that you made isn't as, you know, your, you know, your skill level may have changed a lot, but the hat's still gonna be cute. This looks the exact same width, doesn't it? This is the front. I want this to go. This is the front. Why? I want you to go this way. I swear I pressed it that way. Look at that, it's fighting me. I'm gonna off kilter it from this thickness here. Try and get it to behave a little bit. It was wider before? Okay, thanks for reassuring me. It still looks a little wide to me. The, you know, do you ever find working with stretch denim, how it, it's a little, it doesn't really want to cur crease, right? It kind of fights you. So I'm gonna be sewing this from the other side, but it, you can still pin it from this side. As long as you pin it perpendicular. It'll be A-OK. -okay. Get in there. All right, this is, this is kind of overkill on the pins there. All right, let's check our inseams. Uh, we're gonna fold it along the seam right here. Try and get our pant legs the same length, you know? That's kind of, it's a lot. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so this goes to the, this is the front, this is the back, oh wait. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is the front. Front, back, okay, I did that right. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's like, it's just kind of like boingy, you know? And um, it doesn't really crease. It's got all that elastic in there. 
it increases when I'm pressing it, I should, I should say. But, you know, it's like when you, I mean, how often do we press knits, you know? Stretch wovens are not knits, but they just want to, like, kind of relax again and go back to their natural shape. Oh, yeah. I hope that video isn't lost. Okay, hold this like this. Like this, kind of get it nice and seated. And then let's start pressing. Yeah, you know, I, I'm sorry you guys if you come here for like proper techniques with the like ruler and everything and you know the thing is i'm very production focused sometimes probably too much so for things like that because the way i look at it is when i'm putting it together i'm very focused from the get-go of the length i want and staying consistent when i sew it right so if i'm consistent when i cut and when i sew it i shouldn't have to make any any adjustments you know so that way when i go to him and i shouldn't just hem it but you know like if you're doing this for a friend and you're like i really want to pin this up on them then yeah 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 do that do that now heather we've had a lot of trouble today so seams face which directions at the hems so the um side seam goes towards the back the end seam is stitched on the front. It's just kind of how denim is. You reinforce the end seam with double stitching and most typically it's stitched on the front side. I have totally lost the logic behind that. I don't remember, sorry. All right, let's sew this guy. What did I just get caught on? <laughs> Hi, Eliza. You're we're watching from where? Hello. I should do a pie pin cushion kit. I don't know about a kit. Because reasons, right? Because reasons, because we do it. I do tend to question things sometimes, though. Yeah, yeah. You're not that late, either. I, I had to restart the stream because nobody was here because it wasn't streaming. Said I was, but it wasn't. All right, so um, I'm doing this from the right side because I want the top stitch thread to show. Um, this is the front, this is the back, this is the inseam. So I'm gonna put my back stitch right here because it's the inseam. And I'm gonna feel there for that ridge. Try and keep it nice and flat. You don't really need stretch here, so you don't have to worry about a stretch stitch. I just sew right over the pins when they're perpendicular like this. I've never had an issue with this. Um, it's not to say that you couldn't, but when you're perpendicular, the roundness of the pin, the needle, if it even hits it, you might notice, but it's probably gonna um, get smoothed off of it. Oh, cool, Terry, how fun. Oh, you went, you were sewing a Halloween costume for someone that should have been, oh, been there. Wendy and I were going. That's hilarious. All right, I don't know if I would do a, a kit just because um, I don't mind not shipping products anymore. <laughs> and I'm only one person. <laughs> But um, I, you, I know you guys really are interested in this pattern, so I'll, um, I'll pull it out and check it out. 
It has a sweetheart neckline. Cute though. All right, so walk my mind through this. This is the front, this is the back, and this is the inseam. So I'm putting my start stop on the inseam, on the inside of the leg. Ugh, I hate being poked. You know, it would have been really smart for me to, to pin going this way, and then I could be pulling them out as I go. Um, I, I tend to want to pin into the fold, you know, though, so... Um, my daughter's trying to get a hold of me. go. So I brought a shirt today to wear with my new jeans so I can do the home sew catwalk. Let's see how they're looking. We have our um, carrier or belt loops. All right, so there's our side seam top stitch right there. There's our hems. That's pretty good. Pretty straight. I got a little wavy right there. All right, so let's do the waistband. I've been really focusing on getting better at installing um, the waistband. Hi, Rival. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, Heather, the catwalk will be on Instagram. Don't worry. <laughs> I won't do it here. <laughs> I'm not going to change on camera. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Nice to see you, Rival. I'm, t I'm streaming live on Twitch and YouTube, so I'm talking to people on there as well. So, um, so this is one thing that uh, I feel like my skills could use a little bit better um, finessing on is the waistband right here. When the waistband sits right here and lines up because I sometimes get a little over eager when I'm getting there. I'm good, thanks. I've had a ton of trouble with um, streaming today though. So it's going good now. But it told me I was live earlier and I wasn't and it was streaming what I streamed yesterday. And mm. So the thing about waistbands is that um, I get a little over eager because I'm towards the end and I'm like, yes, I'm almost done. I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to finish. And I will end up not getting this either perfectly straight and in line with the edge of my waistband here, or they won't line up, this seam won't line up here, or the width of the waistband won't line up. So there's lots of little things right here that are a little bit uh, intimidating to think about. So um, the way I always put on my waistbands is kind of the, the the way I would encourage anyone to do it, and I do it from the inside to the outside. So I have the most control over the last little bit, right? So um, that's what I would recommend, especially if you're a newbie. I know in some ways it probably makes people nervous to sew on the outside, but hey, you won't have to worry about catching the inside waistband if you do it this way. So this is why I do it. All right, this waistband's curved, so the long, curved section, the longer side, and the under curve goes to the bottom of the waistband. That's the one that goes to the seam, right? So you're gonna put it on here, and now we have to get past these metal teeth here, because I'm not taking the time to remove them before I go to sew. I'm just checking out that my, it's my pocket lining sticking up here, so I'm gonna focus on lining up with my jean edge. Um, we can even just trim, let's just trim all this off here. Our zipper is pulled down. Do not trim your <laughs> don't not do not trim your um, zipper with it closed. I know it's easier to line it up that way perfectly, but the thing is, if you chop off your pole, you can't get it back on there. I I, I just trust me on that one, right? So, all right, so let's just put it close up there, and then let's cut this really carefully in between the teeth. Don't want to hurt your scissors. And do not pull your 
zipper pull up after this until you have sewn on your waistband. All right, because you'll be sad. There, there's a few things I feel like are really hard to come back from and that would be one that you would have to start, you'd have to unpick a lot to start over. Hi Mata, how's it going? Oh, weird, really, you couldn't chat? That's weird, I wonder why. Were you logged in? Sometimes, um, I have a couple of different YouTube accounts and uh, sometimes I'm not logged in. All right, so let's do this. I uh, interfaced both my waistbands. That's not in the instructions. It's just my preference. I really like my waistband to be kind of sturdy because I don't like those like little diagonal wrinkles happening, you know? And I feel like it gives more stability to it. This is a nice curved waistband, so it kind of prevents the gapping at the back waist that we all hate so much. Um, what else did I do differently here? I do prefer uh, the self fabric, like the outer fabric, whatever you're sewing your jeans in, to be on the inside and the outside of the waistband. But some people like lining on the inside if you don't like a lot of bulk there. So it's just a preference. Think about your jeans and what bugs you about them. All right, so I just gotta remember, I'm about to go over these zipper teeth and I, I don't, I don't, oh, I need to switch the thread, sorry. I have the top stitch thread on right now. I'm so hot. It's I'm all worked up because of this whole streaming thing and maybe they lost my video from yesterday. Bye, Rival. Good luck studying. Thanks for the, thanks for popping in <laughs> and saying hi. All right. At least I make sewing look easier than threading my needle. Yeah, right, you're going to bed routine. Yeah, I know. I loved your pet peeve. Like you really latched onto like, what is my pet peeve? And it was a good one. It was so funny. <laughs> I was like, I, I can relate to that. Um, I think I'm gonna, am I, I'm gonna do 5 eighths in steam. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do 5 eighths in steam. I'm not gonna start, why, why would I change right now? Why would I change? All right, so here, my, my metal is right there. You see it? I can feel it, it's about right here. I'm gonna get up to that point and I'm gonna walk my hand wheel. I'm very seamless, you don't think, I don't think so. I mean, it's when I go to do the um, the threading of the, the needle. I have a lot of trouble, especially when I'm all like, <laughs> Okay, so I tried to keep my notches. Um, where's my center back? I think my center back is, is it this one right here. I think that's my center back, right? There's my center back. Okay, all right. So I'm doing the right side of the waistband to the wrong side of the pant on the inside. This is just my preferred method. I do this for um, collars, cuffs, um, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, small folks, right? They really cramp our style, those small folks. All right, I need to check in here. So here's my center back, and I feel like getting a little, make sure I'm gonna make it. Because, okay, so one thing to think about, I may need to back up actually a little bit, is I ironed this interfacing to this waistband here, and so it's kind of fixed it into the length that um, it is right now. So let's let's walk this and see. Yeah, yeah, so see, look at that. <laughs> it's a little bit, so let's back it up and ease it in there a little bit more because I've kind of lost the stretch of the waistband. It's still there a little bit, see that? And I'm fine with that. I don't really like my waistbands being stretchy because I don't like my pants slipping down. I don't like them um, 
uh, bagging out over the course of the day, you know? So I don't like doing the shimmy shimmy cocoa pop, you know, all day to get my keep my pants above my hips or my belly. So I don't mind that my waistband, I actually want it this way. It's not even that I don't mind. This is how I wanted it. But I need to remember that the waistband in certain spot, the waist seam in certain spots on the pants, especially the back right here, has had nothing done to it right here. There's not even a stay stitch in there. So, I mean, this right here is so stretchy that I really need to re respect the fact that um, I may need to tame it a little bit once it hits the waist seam. So, so let's see, where's that side seam? There's the side seam right there. So yeah, let's back this up a little bit. I'm doing the messier style of seam ripping because um, I just want to stay clear of trying to unpick my seams on this because I can't see them. And on the interfacing because I don't want to snag my interfacing. So I'm just doing this messy style. All right, let's see. Let's back up a little bit more. Oh, Kalidokali. Let's see, here's my side seam. I didn't really change my pants too much, but I did try and respect the fact that I wanted the notches to be back in the same spots. I didn't want to like shirt shrift myself there, you know? I kind of wanted to, but then I was like, no, 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 Sarah, do the work, do the work. You'll be so happy when you're at this point, you know? You don't want to second guess things. All right, so now we're at that side seam. So let's match up our center back and make it non-negotiable. So that's our spot right there. Right there. Okay. No problem, I mean, look at that. It's really not even gonna be hard. It's not that it doesn't match, it's just because the um, ironing on the interfacing on the waistband probably made it shrink a tiny bit, even though I've pre-washed it. And also um, the waist at the yoke there is pretty stretchy. Maybe doing a stay stitch there would be a good idea. So we ha I have my um, label in there too. Just making sure it's all eased and smooth under there. I'm gonna kind of take a gander at my label, make sure it's not too high or low. I feel like I'm barely catching it. So let's look at it. Yeah, so I can raise this up a little bit. I didn't get quite the amount of clearance at the top of my label as I would have liked. I may have asked for that amount. I'm so focused on quarter inch seams sometimes. <laughs> So let's see, let's put about right there. And you'll notice too that I centered my label over the seam allowance, not the center of the pant. This is the center of the pant over here. I did that because it's a visual thing for me. I like the way it looks over the seam allowance. That's not correct, by the way. <laughs> it's just my own little thing. <laughs> okay. You do the things that bug you the least because that's why we make our clothes, right? All right, where's my other side seam? Here it is, right here. And then let's walk this all the way to here. Okay, no problem. Let's put in our pin right here, non-negotiable. I used to really fret over waistbands. I still kind of fret on the center front pot. Hi, Nancy. How's it going? Are you in that storm too? Are you getting that storm? Um, I, I I still fret over the center front of the waistband. I'm really trying to get better my skills at kind of nailing it on the first try and getting it so that um, it's all lined up right there. That's a part you handle a lot, but closing and buttoning. <laughs> yeah, I know she won the giveaway. Isn't that awesome? I actually was so excited. I was like, yay, Nancy. So fun. So fun to see people. That have supported you from the beginning, you know, be able to get some. 
I use grow grain ribbon too. I used to always do that. Just a little piece of ribbon or bias because it because it, it's soft, you know. Because grow grain ribbon can be kind of scratchy, you know. The labels are really fun. I'm really I'm really having fun with them. At first, I was a little like, "Well, this feels a little egocentric putting my face in these." <laughs> I just did it as a placeholder to get the artwork um, quote, but then it kind of grew on me. All right, so we're getting close to some more um, uh, metal teeth here. All right, these teeth are, by the way, just so gigantic. I have a little trouble getting around them. So I kind of lift up the presser foot and just feel there barely, and it's, um, if you think you've even barely touched the teeth when you do this, um, you should change your needle soon after this. Oh yeah, right. You're not eating all the hurricane snacks. Yeah, my idea of where the hurricane is is pretty distorted. I'm on the west coast, you know, and I've been paying attention to it, but only based on the people I know that are there and reporting back on it, you know? I know, I saw, your, I saw that you sent me an email, Nancy. I actually left the office right away and I haven't been on my email since yesterday. So I'm a little behind, but I'm sending it out today. And I even talked to my postal carrier on like, what's the best way to get them packages, you know? I was like, I'm over this nonsense. All right, let's look at this. This looks good. And then um, now it's time, look, look, at, look at the underside. I always forget to do this. Make sure nothing got like, Flipped in there. Let's see, look, the inside of the waist already looks really nice, right? You don't even have to worry about now um, catching this edge if you were doing it the other direction. All right, so now we are going to sew this one onto here. Um, oh, the ruler I use, this one here. I think it's West, Westcott. So sometimes it is called uh, just a see-through ruler and it's literally spelled C-T-H-R-U. So not like the actual word see-through, they kind of abbreviated it with C and through. And, um, I find these at um, art supply stores, um, sewing, like places like Michael's Craft Supply and Joanne Craft Supply, like big craft places and, and sewing places. Uh, I haven't found them at Joanne Fabrics. They might be there, but I've never looked there for them. Um, engineering, like any kind of engineering or architectural supply places, um, they always have really cool supplies and stuff. That's my go-to ruler. I just really like it. I think you gotta, like, I know people that love the big patchwork quilting rulers, um, and they can't use those. So, yeah, you don't have them in Germany. There might be a distributor, though. They're, they've been around for forever. There's probably some place. Okay. I'm trying to get some pants on this guy because it's so bright. All right, so I'm going to pin this in a, just a couple of places so my um, waistband doesn't torque at all because I'm like, oh, wait, I'm really close to that spot. I really need to get there quicker and then distort it unknowingly. So let's see. There's my center back. I do this so differently probably than most people don't I, you guys. <laughs> I just kind of do it as I go. <laughs> I barely had enough interfacing right here. There in the sewing notions section. I don't know if she has Joanne Fabrics in Germany though. That's awesome to know that though. I bought a new ruler. Well, yeah, I showed you guys. That one with the edge. Kind of kind of interesting. Alright. Let's just put a pin kind of. Part way. 
just love how I push this pin cushion wherever I, my hand wants to put it, but not where my brain thinks it's gonna be. I think if I made these again, um, if I made one for myself, it, it's a little light, you know? Like I would probably do something, either make something sticky right here, or I would put a weight in it. I experimented with this and then I just kind of like had moved on. So I didn't really, yeah, try Amazon. That's probably true. And the one I like is two inches by 18 inches. I don't know if they come in centimeters. There's a really good possibility that that may be why you don't find them there. All right, so I'm gonna leave. Um, I've been experimenting. This is my own little special project I do in my head. So I'm sorry you guys are gonna fall prey to it right now. Um, so when I did my jackrabbit pants right here and I got to this spot, I did this. I started like this and then I sewed up the edge and then around the top all the way around. And when I got to the other side, I folded up this edge as well. This time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it down because there's huge drawbacks to both. There's no one good way I really love. So this is my problem with this one is that you can kind of sometimes see part of that fold. Like this one I got pretty good. This is thread here. Um, I find it tricky to when I when this is sewn and like this and you turn it you turn it to the right side you have all of this to deal with right if I do this and I turn it to the right side I get to fold it up and do it actually I don't know maybe I should just stick with this this fabric feels so thick this turned out pretty good I'm pretty happy with that. This one, you know, you can see like it's pushed off of the edge this way. You see that? So thick. So, so my other little tip is when you're going around, going on this edge right here, because this is my last seam, right? This is this was my last seam on these two. So it didn't matter that my stitching didn't fall on top of the waistband in here. No one sees this but my belly. <laughs> but on the outside, it looks good. That's why I do it this way. It's like origami, it, totally. The ruler's on Amazon for $7.89, that's a good price. You just grade a lot in hand stitch. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's it. I've done that too. Totally know, I know what you mean. Yeah, I'm loving these, Nancy. I'm gonna wait till after the reunion to wear them, wear them, wear them, you know? But, um, so then I can get them dirty. <laughs> so, okay, so, um, but I feel like this one went pretty good, except for the fact that I didn't know I didn't use a zipper with a lock at the top but it all lines up pretty good look at that this was one, this is one of my best ones I feel like this fabric was great for this because it's not too thick and it doesn't stretch <laughs> you know so it lined up pretty good of course the one place I put a rabbit I just noticed I I put it on this side and I covered it but no one's gonna really see this all right so I think I'll, I'll do this. I'm gonna, if I do it, if I hang it down a little bit and it goes to this side, maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I will not line it up this fold edge with that fold edge. I just like knowing what's gonna happen. Like what happens when I do this? And do I like that, you know? My zipper's getting caught. So I'm gonna try and get right on that edge there best I can. Straight up and then around. Always looking for that pie. So <laughs> that is so awesome that that one's going to you, Nancy. I know, it's so funny. I did that as a joke to myself. So um, if you look like, um, they're called see-through rulers and it's literally spelled c-t-h-r-u you might you know you might have to go through a different amazon than lisa sees oh thanks for following luminous emerald happy to have you here she might not have it though lisa because they have a different amazon there 
can't buy something from our Amazon and have it shipped. It won't let her. Sorry, I'm assuming you're a her, but I think you said you're a mom, so. That pen just jumped out of my pink cushion. All right. Yeah, so she might not be able to, because they're, if they're not in centimeters, they may not have picked them up. I wonder if you could find uh, one of those sewing and quilting rulers, Mata, that um, is thinner. Those are great. I, I like those. My, my issue with them is that the measurements don't go all the way up to the edge. It'll be like 15 and a quarter inch. So, yeah. You know, Nancy, you might try, um, what's that? What's the other Amazon like? Um, it's got a funny name. What the heck? Is it all? It's not Ollie. Um, what the heck? One of you's going to know it. All right, so here we are. Let's see where my pivot point is. It's about right here. All right, and so we're going to go straight down. And look at this. See how I was? I lined these up. I have all that folds under here. Then I get to this one, and I have not as much. It's so weird. Just make sure I'm not pulling on my waistband and stretching it out. All right. Alibaba, that's it. Yeah, you might be able to find it there. Okay, so this is one thing I'm working on, like I said, uh, is getting my waistbands to line up to each other. So I'm going to trim this a little bit right here, just going down here. Um, but I'm not going to trim this corner off quite yet because I really want to see if they look like they're lining up before I do that. You know? So I look at it like this. And see, like, look at that. You see that? Is that really off like that much? These are in my needle sharp, um, Nancy. So I didn't get to pick it. But I agree, these are really cute. All right, so let's look at it. Um, yeah, like right now this looks hecka off. But the, the curve of the waistband is going to play make a play in here. So let's see if I can get these as naturally lying as possible. Like I feel like I did pretty good here, but right up here, what the heck, you know? Why? What am I doing? Okay, and I've got the curve. What do you guys think? See that, how off that is? Let's turn down the brightness. Did that even change anything? <laughs> I don't know if that actually changed anything. Hmm. I just don't like like chopping that off right there. I just worry then that I lose some of my waistband. But I really want it. I don't want it sticking up. It's right there. You know? Well, I'm going to chop it off. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, well, we'll see in a second. I'm not going to I'm not going to cut my corner off yet. I mean, is it a quirk of the fabric being on the bias right there? Is it the 
stretch of the denim? Is it the curve of the waistband? Is it my sewing or cutting error? You know what I mean? Like all these things. Okay, so let's turn it and we'll do the best we can trying to see. But all this thickness is, is gonna kind of prevent some accuracy being able to be, um, to be able to see. Okay, so that's pretty good. All right, let's see here. Okay. I'm gonna look at it straight up and down. Right, I know, right. I have I have a few that didn't work out either, and they bug me every time I put them on because the um, like see, like look at this. Wait, all right. Let me just pin it a little bit. Let's let's give it a fighting chance. Cause look, look at that. It's not even like it's not even straight right here. So let's see here. Let's make sure the back. Let's try and be as accurate as possible before we make any snap judgments. You know. This is when the fabric feels really thick because of the interfacing too. Okay, so we have this. I really am concerned with it matching right here. This isn't as key, but I do want this to be square. Um, all right, and so let's, let's put this all here. Um, I could let this kind of thing stress me out, but it doesn't anymore. I decided to make it like my personal little like thing, you know, does it look better? I couldn't tell Nancy. Let me see. I have to look at them straight up and down. So I feel like, um, I feel like this part is a little bit higher now, but I can't quite tell. It looks pretty good. Like once this is top stitched flat, this is going to be a little bit, you know, like flatter and more upright, but so will this one, you know? And I, I don't know which one I would rather be off, if I would rather this be shorter or what. So I think I could actually maybe back off a little bit of what I trimmed off on this. That's pretty good. I like that it's looking pretty straight this way and here. It's not looking like this or like this. This is lining up here. So I feel pretty good about that. I'm paying more attention and that's, yeah, it's really hard to see, isn't it? So um, let me hold it so that the curve is in effect. But um, Your jeans seem to get graded down. Hi, I will be me for you. How's it going? What do you mean, um, do jeans seams, oh, seams get graded down? Um, no, I mean, they, they can in like, I'm gonna definitely grade the waistband. If, that, if you're asking in, in light of this waistband little thing I'm doing here, yeah, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna clip the corner and I'm gonna, tidy my seams but I'm actually not going to grade them because typically you don't because of the wear you're going to see this edge through the jeans eventually like you're gonna get that little like you know lovely wear line you know from like it fading you think the curve is throwing me out okay I know because when I when I when I like try and like make it like the a smile right Looks pretty good. This side looks a little high, so maybe I could trim off a little bit of what I um, brought it down. There are places where grading seams is really great, but I don't do a lot on my denim, to tell you the truth. 
So. <laughs> awesome, Ray. Come on by. <laughs> yeah, so because look at how much I just did that. So maybe I'm going to split the difference. Which means I have to like remove some of my stitches through the interfacing. You know, and I, I don't really like doing that. But at least I didn't go... <laughs> like on my jackrabbit ones, I did this and I went from like here to here. <laughs> that was really gradual. <laughs> I don't know if I'm looking for perfect, but I, I do like... I think the one thing um, I've learned w when, I, when I get a little better at sewing it's when I try and figure out like um, the physics of it, like, oh, when I touch this, what happens over here, you know? And what I learned with having the factory at Chicken Boots was that sometimes the most unlikeliest thing would affect something. And, you know, so, so sometimes, you know, me and Rianne would be troubleshooting something like, why is this happening every time we do this? Like, it's not a problem, but it could be a problem. So why is this happening? And then we would try and do kind of the opposite type of thing completely. And we'd be like, oh, well, that's what it is. How weird, you know? So um, I, I find it, I just find it really interesting. And I think when you understand what, what you're doing affects in one spot, um, how it affects things, it, you can, might you be able to use that for something else. So... And this is obviously kind of a little tricky. It's like the, the, what do you call it? Like the, it's like the convergence of all the things. Yeah, cause and effect, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, right, Nancy? I know, I feel like, like, like someone yesterday said, wow, you're such a tidy sewer. You know, but the thing is, it, it's like a morale boost, right? Like if I trim my threads as I go, the sewing looks good. And then when I see it the next day, I'm like, oh. Like when I saw this yesterday or like later on, I was like, this looks okay to me now. This isn't not bugging me right here. I don't even remember what it was now. I'm sure I could figure it out, but I'm not going to. <laughs> All right, so this is, I just took it down a tiny, like split the difference. So now I'm gonna commit, I'm actually gonna reinforce this corner before I clip this corner. Because I'm going with the lower one. Right here, like this. It's so spongy and soft. All right, so it's clipped. And let's clip this one here. And now we are ready to finish our waistband. Except I forgot. The belt loops. Oh my god. I don't think these are long enough though to put in the seam. Pretty sure they're not. Let me see. Are these long enough to go in the seam? Oh, they are. Oh, it's not too late. Because I do it the way I do it. Oh my gosh. That's so awesome, Nancy. That's so awesome. That's that's really cool. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, that's, I can't wait to make that dress, by the way. I, where these go like right here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the um, belt loops in the waist seam here. Because I just remembered, I'm gonna put one there. They usually go right in front of your pocket. And I'm gonna put one. Um, there are uh, guides on the pattern and I'm, I'm kind of sorry I don't have those anymore. <laughs> right here. And then um, I don't really have the length to do all of these. So I'm going to do one about an inch past the side seam. Oh, look, there's my favorite thing in the whole world. Sarcasm intended. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to drop the seam, this one lower. Really? 
your daughter asked you to make her. Aw. That's awesome. Someone asked my daughter uh, to buy one of her paintings at my husband's work. And it's such a great, you know, morale booster. All right. So um, who, who is it? Wait, who puts the crisscross? So smart. But I think I have to do that at the very end. All right. Let's see here. Can I still do my belt loop with this short of a belt loop? Will my belt fit in that? I do not know. Hmm. You know what I think I'm going to do, you guys? I'm going to steal these from my two back ones, and then I'm going to later on make belt loops uh, for the center back and do the crisscross thing. So I'm going to steal these, you know, since I, you're only really supposed to get five that are three and a half inches and you'd have a little bit extra and you'd throw it away. But I kind of was like, oh shoot, I don't have enough for the last one. When I did, that was just supposed to be the extra, you know? So, um, where's the other short one? Long, 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 wait, this one not long right here? It's pretty long. I mean, that one's long enough right there. That was one of the shorter ones. All right, well. All right, well, I'll just. I guess I could just not do the crisscross, too. Because, you know, I really like being done when I'm done. Okay, Nancy. Hasta mañana, Iguana. Actually, I won't be here tomorrow. Hasta sabado. <laughs> I'll just take this one. I'll just do a center one. So thick right here for that little label. That label is so thick, you guys, with all those colors. Okay, so one thing to think about with your um, belt loop is this is the seam. This is the center back, but this top stitching goes to the... Um, right of the seam here. I'm going to line up my belt loop to the top stitching, not the seam. You know what I mean, jelly beans? You know what I mean? That way, um, well, I'm going to try and line it up better than that. Let's line it up better than that. see if this end matches a little better. I think, um, I think I, I let my presser foot, I think it was boss right then. Okay, that's better, huh? Okay, let's do this. All right, so now we're gonna turn our waistband to the front side. I'll just do my corners first. Like this. I know I should fuss more on my corners. I just, I don't know why I just don't. There's a whole like science behind it and people are really good at it, you know? Yeah, I would look off the other way, exactly. When I started realizing that it's okay, I do whatever I want, <laughs> it made a big difference in my sewing. And then I started realizing, oh, what I want is what everybody wants. They're all doing this too. I'm not breaking some rule that it had to be in the center, you know? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna turn my pants kind of like this way to me. And I'm gonna do my like anchoring points first. So I'm maybe I should press this. I think I will press this first and pretend like it's a, a French seam where I press the seam allowance one direction and then I press it on its edge. Because you don't really want it, this to happen where the seam drops below. I'm exaggerating it, you know, like you don't want that and you don't want the other thing, right? So let's press it, let's get it warmed up. Have my label, my label in there? Yeah, that's in there. 
Let's look at our threads here. But I'll pin it over here, okay? I'll go right back. This is definitely a step I would have skipped at some point in my sewing world, <laughs> in my sewing career. <laughs> This will help keep the uh, my waistband more evenly sewn in width, you know? You know. Now let's just press it on this waistband edge right here. It's actually pressing really nice. It's a little easier to press it from the side. I'm really uh, wrestling with it, aren't I? So I'm not, I'm not actually worried about the uh, part I'm gonna press under right here yet. I, I won't even iron that first. Um, I'm gonna get everything else where I know I want it to be. Cause this is actually kind of what reigns supreme for me is that these edges all stay like this because all the rest of it will be a lot easier to do. And then I can just fold it under as I go based on what these edges want to be because I told them that that's what they want to be now, you know? Well, this looks nice. This looks pretty good. I'm happy with this so far, you know? Yeah, what is the, um, what's the steam a seam? I feel like I used to know what that is. Is that like a, um, a spray? Yeah, these edges are convinced. I'm the boss of you. <laughs> okay, so now I like to just pin, I just pin along here to say, yep, this is how I want you. This is all non-negotiable right here. And then I will turn under these edges as I go. And the belt loops will get on last. So they will get folded up at the top and then edge stitched down. That's when they'll happen. So it's like your, your, your waistband kind of looks like a, a hot mess until you're completely done. You know? It's just kind of the nature of the beast. I can feel the curve of this waistband. Like, like my hands aren't really showing you exactly what I'm feeling right now. So when I'm over here, like this one hasn't been pinned yet, right? And so it looks, it looks kind of wonky, but then when I line it up and I kind of let the curve of the waistband, this curve, the waistband curve, it wants to lay like that. It's fine, but it feels kind of off when you first start using it. And it's because of that curve. You forget like your hands want to just straighten it out like this, like it's a straight waistband, but it's not, you know? All right. So I'm going to turn my pants inside out so I can sew on the waistband a little easier from the inside of it since I don't have a free arm like this and um, and now I'm gonna pin my under my fold in a few places last time
time I got this, it pushed up like this, my my, my uh, tag, you know, not spray a quarter inch bar. Oh, 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 okay, okay. I was so like, you know, like scarred working at that place that was like, no glue. <laughs> that I've never really experimented with things like that. Yeah, but that makes sense. Like an extra hand to hold things. That's so, that's so great. You know, like I say, always say whatever works for you, you know. Okay, I kind of don't want to sit here and pin all this because I've got all this other stuff pinned and I feel pretty good about it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in my, um, top stitch thread and then let's see how it feels when I go to start sewing you know I can't drop this spool of thread because my other one is pretty much forgotten and in lava <laughs> otherwise I'm crawling under my machine which I don't really want to do all right here we go. Uh, I'm gonna do a lot of thickness right now and see how it's gonna look. That looks actually better. It loves that even better. Good. <laughs> Boy, do I have the job for you then. All right, so we're gonna start at the center back here. I'm not gonna start directly on that seam. It would be it would be great. I mean, I, I could I could start on that seam. Let's see. Do I really wanna um Oh yeah, I've used washable glue sticks before when I worked somewhere doing applique. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've used glue stick when I worked somewhere uh, where we did um, baby quilts and they applied it with the application machine and they would just glue stick everything on there. I would really like my back stitch to be under that belt loop, so Maybe I'll give it a go. I'm not, I'm not gonna back stitch till the end anyway, so. All right, so what I am thinking about right now is I just want this fold to cover my first seam. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I just want this fold to cover the seam right here that I already sewed, right? I don't need to catch the waistband on the inside, so I'm not really worried about that. So, um, but I am worried about um, the, the stretch of the waistband kind of wanting to like get pushed from the presser of my pressure foot, like pushed like this, stretched, and then extra fabric piling up when I get to the end. So I'm gonna think about that. I'm gonna try and relieve the pressure of my presser foot, like just by lifting it up occasionally, pushing it a little bit, keeping everything straight up and down, like one on top of each other, not letting the fabric slip like this like when it's coming towards me, you know? Most of sewing is learning how to handle the fabric, knowing how it's gonna react when you do things. It's mostly what it is. You just experience handling it, you know? Ah, thanks for subscribing, Mary. Thanks for joining us. Happy to have you here. All right, so. So yeah, so I when I used to do waistbands, collars, any of that stuff, I was so, like, I would be doing this part last. And if you were to sew on this side, your stitching would show, right? So then I was like, oh, I'll be clever, and I'll sew from the outside, trying to catch the inside, and then sometimes I would miss. So then I just turned it on its head, and I was like, how about I just sew from the inside to the outside? And I'm really glad I see more and more people um, that this is the technique they use. And I'm pretty sure ready to wear jeans are um, sewn like this, but they're, they're actually they're actually not sewn like this. They're actually sewn with a machine that does it automatically and it puts on the whole waistband in one because you can see it's a chain stitch. Yeah, walking foots are great. I do not have a walking foot. This is a needle feed, it's very different. Um, but a lot of people who have, um, um, 
industrial machines that are like me about my size like and and so as much as i do they will have a um needle feed and then the next step up is a walking foot and the needle feed is going like as if as if the machine is going this way the needle's doing this and and walking <laughs> yeah it's a lifesaver right terry okay so now i'm, I'm towards the end right and now I don't want all this fabric getting extra and extra and pushing off the end like this, right? That happens to me all the time, right? So what I kind of like doing is pinning it a little, like pulling it so that the seam of the waistband is pushed a little like this incorrectly. I exaggerated a little bit. Because my pressure, pressure of my presser foot is definitely going to press some fabric toward me right now. And it has been the whole time. And then this way, um, when I get there, that's okay. <laughs> it will all even out by the time I get there. Yeah, it's actually not feeling like it'll be okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try and tell it that no, 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 no. We are not going off the edge. No. Let's let's push, let's put a pin right here. We go like that. Now let's try and get this all to lay in there flat. Let's get the all out. And I'm gonna hold this fabric like this to keep it in line back here. I want it to stay back there. Okay, now I'm getting close to my teeth here. They're gigantic teeth. At least I can finally see them while I'm doing this part. Gonna walk our needle around it. No problem that time. So now I'm noticing my little pieces of folded waistband are poking out the bottom. I'm gonna use my awl to poke those in there. Right? And I'm gonna take this little edge, I'm gonna pull it down over all that so it stays in there. stitch at a time all right I got to the end I'm a pivot and now we're gonna have to sew with the machine the the, the jeans under the machine head kind of awkward because I like doing it all in one and I don't like starting and stopping at the center front right here mainly because I I um feel like that's where your your most concerned is right here and when you have like a back stitch there and then you have to like fiddle with it over and over again and pulling it out right there it gets tired and I don't know, I feel like that leads to tears for me. <laughs> so what I like to do is keep the back stitch at the center back and um, just kind of keep all that hoo-ha back there, you know? And then keep this as seamless as possible. And I just pretend like everything's great. Everything's gonna be perfect. We're never gonna visit this spot again because it's gonna go right the first time. Because we are confident that way, right? <laughs> we are the boss here. And I got my I got my stitching a little bit off there. I'm so on the edge of this fabric, it's not good. <laughs> Let's see if I can get my waistband up here a little tight higher. I I probably should have walked that a half stitch. Eek! I am right on the edge of that waistband. Okay. Good thing this is like starting on this end is great because this is the one that's underneath my other one. So you know. If it's not that great, then at least it's underneath my other end of my waistband. So really awkward for me to sew with my um, fabric under the machine head. All right, we are to the halfway point. Oh, sorry, I'm just reading a text from my daughter. She's tried to call a couple times and she's texted, so I'm just making sure nothing's going on. She's just forgetting that I'm streaming. She's out of data, so she can't text me. <laughs> All right, we're almost to the front here. 
the best part about um, the way our machine are, are uh, like engineered so that, I mean, I don't know if it's like right-handed sewing or left-handed sewing, but this is the only way, you know, the machine head's always been on the right-hand side. And so in a way, it's kind of encouraged you to go that way first. That's great because when we get to this point right here, we won't be pushing the fabric off the end. We'll be pushing it towards the body. And this is the right, this is the one that's the most visible to us. You know what I mean? To the outside world. So, so we're gonna get to this little bit here. It is really thick and we have to remember there's, there's teeth here. I forgot that last time and my machine went right over and I had no problem. So I got really, really lucky. So. All right, we're turning a corner. I leave with the needle down. I put the um, presser foot up. And now I'm gonna stack all these edges right on top of each other best I can. I'll even kind of distort this over here to pull it in there. And I'm gonna push my edges of my waistband inside there with the awl. I'm gonna hold it like that. That looks so good right there. Let's hope it stays like that when I go to sew it, right? Okay, now it's really easy for me to forget my zipper teeth that I have to go over and I'm about to do that. So I'm glad I remember just now. So many things to think about, but we're on the home stretch. All right, we're good. That one lined up perfectly. All right, you guys. Home stretch. Lots to think about, but you know, one step at a time. And I feel like I have better success when I just kind of take it one step at a time, talk myself through it. You know, and is my stitching perfectly even to the edge? It's not bad, but it's not great. And, um, the thing is, you, you're not gonna really notice that later on because the orange thread sticks out so much that it's really kind of what you see. It gives you the optical illusion of being as straight as you think you were when you did it. <laughs> All right, so now we have this last little bit. Let's make sure we have nothing like extra. Let's put it in there. It doesn't look like we're gonna have any trouble getting all this in there. This is looking really good. I feel like I'm getting better and better at my waistbands. My sewing has improved in the, this past year, and I'm, I'm really glad, you know, like it's pretty cool. You guys make me better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are such a great cheerleader, Ray. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so here we are back at my starting point. My machine, uh, you know, it's kind of like, I feel it, bunk, 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 bunk. Um, I, I don't know if I would do this on my home machine. I would probably do it off center. But look at that, it's pretty good. Get rid of this little thread here. Time for a cookie. <laughs> Let's see how we did here. Not bad. Now, if you were seeing skipped stitches, you should change your needle and adjust your ten tension. So look at how close I got to the edge there. It kind of stretched it out. This was the the fabric, because it's on this curve, got, gets really stretchy right here. I noticed that before, and I was kind of really glad that the um, interfacing, I was doing double. And so this, this isn't great right here. This is not... For me now, at the point I'm at, I am not going to take this out and get it perfect because guess what? It's going to do this. It's going to go over it like this, you know? So why should I spend a bunch of time and then putting a start stop here and a start stop here and then potentially have other issues, right? So this I think is pretty good. So let's see how it looks all zipped up. The true test. Hopefully I didn't stretch anything out. Now it doesn't line up, right? Because I was already a little worried about that. Ooh, they're looking so done.
a little wingy. Not bad. I would take it. I'll take it. That little spot is uh, is a little, yeah, you know. Yeah. All right. So um, let's do our our um, majiggies. <laughs> you know what majiggies are, right? do our belt loops. So one thing that I don't like is when my threads right here pull out. And so this is what I do. I do this to all my belt loops. I just sit here and pull it. Get rid of it now. I feel like this is what makes my um, ready to wear stuff look kind of cheap is when I can see little threads like this. And I don't trim this. There's like little frayed edges of the black now. I'm not gonna trim that because then I would be back in the same spot pulling these threads again, right? So I'm trying to get rid of all these little things that are gonna sneak out. Cause look how easy they are. They're gonna sneak out underneath my belt loops, making my belt lo loops look a little messy right there. We never scrutinize our ready to wear in a critical way as we do our homemade stuff. And guess what? It was a human that made those too. Nothing is made completely without a human behind the machine. All of our clothes are made. Just think of that person sitting there sewing your stuff. Because they are. All right, let's just check on my belt loops because uh, some of them look different. <laughs> and I thought I fixed that. <laughs> you know? Bye, Elaine. Stay safe, in, stay, stay safe in the storm. Sorry, I can't talk. Good luck. All right, let's do our, um, so one thing I could do is stitch across right there. So let's do this. I'm gonna stitch right here. I'm kind of cheating using top stitch thread there. It's gonna go like this now, and then this one's up here right in line with the stitches. Like I said, I, my machine's not gonna handle a bar tack. Yeah, right? I know. And do we ever, like, I feel like, I know this is kind of like too much information, but I, I feel like it's when I'm sitting there in the bathroom and my clothes are sitting there and I just start looking at things, you know, and I'm like, what the heck? Why am I hard about these things, you know? Yeah. No, I knew what you meant. Yeah, in the store. Exactly. Try and get your belt loops straight up and down. There's, that's the little tack right there. Let's see, where's my other one? Here's the other one. That looks so store-bought, doesn't it? <laughs> Hello, Walter, how's it going? Welcome. Hello from California. <laughs> All right, so um, we're gonna, we're almost done with our jeans here. We're to the fun bits. Okay, so this is through my uh, label. So let's lift up the label. Glad I thought about that. I don't wanna, you know, sew through my face. Did she really, Ray? That's awesome. I love it. Smart. All right, let's put this one up here. This one was already sewn, that's right. That's why there's some stitches there, okay. Remember, my belt loop here is off center of the center back, so I lined it up with stitching instead, intentionally. It's a beautiful day there. That's awesome. One of our streamers is in the storm, the Dorian storm. She just took off though. 
Big Sky. I used to live in Colorado. Loved it. Love the Big Sky there. Loved the afternoon rainstorms in the summer. Worked on a farm. Just loved it. And I haven't spent any time in Montana though, so. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at, I'm getting so many texts from my daughter. Okay, it's okay, well, it's cool. It's back to school night and she doesn't want to go. <laughs> That's what it is. She's like, it's, I just checked, it's not mandatory. <laughs> yeah, well it is for us, so. I, did I miss one? Oh, I didn't do the top of that one yet. <laughs> it felt kind of different just now, but I was like, huh. You used to live in California? That's awesome. Love California. I've lived here just about my whole life. Except for the two years I lived in Cali or Colorado. Lived there for a year, two different times. California is a big state. All right, is this my last one right here? I am pretty happy with these jeans. I, I feel pretty good right now. Now we're gonna do the tack button and the rivets, all the hardware. You guys with me for that? You down for that? My um, thread got sucked in there, my end thread. So now it looks all yucky. I hate this. Such a pet peeve. I was having good luck, so I was getting a little cavalier not holding it. There we go. Dang it. It's always the last one. Ah, oh, really? There's a lot of spray in um, Cal Northern California, too. So. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I know I'm going to do tack buttons. Dang, I really got a messy, uh, messy one here, didn't I? Look at that. All right. Yeah, you know, I might, I might go back over that a little bit. All right, let's see here. Here we go. I think I'm good. Here's another one. Is this the one I was just monkeying with? No, this isn't it. Dang, I should have been a little less cavalier about holding that thread. Maybe I thought it was going good and it wasn't. I have brought them to life. The rivets and the belt loops are also a mystery. These look pretty good. I'm happy. Uh, the waistband, you know. Cool, all right, so now we're going to do the um, button in buttonhole. We've got our hems done. This is our last step. We have some rivets. So let's, um, let me think about, it. we'll do the button and buttonhole and I'll come back here to do the rivets and the tack button so I can be on this table here. So just a second while I move one of my cameras over. Let's see, I think I have a little scene. Don't I have a scene that says like, uh, I'm moving over? Thanks, Mata. Oh, wait, which one is it? Is it this one? Is it not this one? Okay, wait, let me see if this is this scene. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me move my camera over. I don't wanna make you guys nauseous moving cameras, you know? Okay, we need jeans, pens, scissors, all, oh, team ripper, chalk, mouse. Jane? 
little trouble with the cameras over here because um, the machine head of a sewing machine is less angled. So what happens is um, it's more, it obscures the needle more here. How's that, you guys? I'll well, pull it down for any um, close-up stuff, okay? All right, so there's the mouse, um, our thread. You fell asleep during the bell loops. I know, it's probably really late there, isn't it? I'm sorry. They turned out okay. Not bad. I'm happy with them. It's been a while since I did a few. All right, so let me switch to black thread here. I have a knee lift on this machine, but I always forget about it. late enough that the workers are back already? I can hear them in the next room. My office is inside of a landscaping business. They're all super nice. Kind of curious about what I'm doing here, I'm sure. <laughs> I really feel for a lot of them like work outside and whew, man, it has been a really hot summer, you guys. Okay, so we're gonna do a tack button and a tack button is the kind that you have on your jeans. So it has a, a rigid post. Um, I'm gonna use this one right here. So this is it right here. So it has a rigid post and you install it with these guys here. Yeah, I was just looking like, I actually have never used these kinds of rivets before. This is what came in my needle sharp box, so um, I'm just using exactly what I got. So we'll check it out. And so this is the little adorable little anvil that I got in um, my needle sharp box. Oh, right. Oh, thank you for reminding me of that little hole. You took a look at your bobbing cages last time you did buttonholes, and some have the hole in the finger for tension. Yeah, so, and they're not all Bernina's. Oh, my mic needs adjustment. Thank you. There you go. Come here, you. So many things. I feel so techy. Is that better? Oh, wait. Shoot. Is that okay? Can you guys hear me? Hi, Julia. How's it going? Can you still hear me? Yeah, okay, good. I uh, twisted it so much that I was starting to bend the cord plugged into it. I was like, oh my God. No, you don't have a Bernina. And so some of your bobbin cases have that. Okay, so what we're talking about, you guys, is who was it? Was it Carol that was the savior that day? My buttonhole was looking like meh. And she said, don't forget to thread it into this little eye. I was like, wait, what? And it made a huge difference. Yeah, so um, it made a huge difference and I can't thank her enough. So let's put that in there right now. You just, all I did, I'd never done this before. I just threaded it through the hole right there, just like that, and I left it. And apparently that's a Bernina specific thing, but it sounds like it's not a Bernina specific, th specific thing. Awesome, Julia. Oh, nice. I've had a ton of problems with YouTube and Twitch today. Not Twitch, but YouTube and my stream. It said I was live, but I wasn't. And then it said I was live before this morning. Like this morning I was live and, I, and it was my stream from yesterday. So I was kind of confused. So this little anvil, as adorable as it is, came in my needle sharp box to make these jeans. Um, I actually will probably use it because I'm using my machine table to put it on, but at my regular table, I just go on the table. So, so. 
Yeah, so the hole helps with the buttonhole application. Exactly. Your bean has a hole. Yeah, so it's for buttonholes specifically. I don't know. It might be used for other things too. So one thing I learned with my um, trial pair of these is that I wanted the post to be a little past the seam, the button to be like right here, so that when it was buttoned, it took all the strain off of the fly right here. Because what was happening was it was right here, and then when I'm wearing it, it was pulling it and putting these like diagonal lines like this, right? Which I've also compensated for um, the, those diagonal lines by interfacing this little area right here, and so I'm hoping I don't get them anyway. So I think I'm definitely going to focus on putting my tack button um, probably to the left of this, because remember, this is actually not the center front. This is where this edge is lining up, right? And so, um, you, you know, because your buttonhole is back here, it is kind of unconventional. You think, oh, I want the button right here. I'm going to do mine a little bit more like this and just take all the strain off of the fly. It's an experiment. We'll see. So yours is an old Morse. I've heard of Morses. But I don't know anything about them. I wonder how they relate to Bernina's, you know? How's the lighting, you guys? All I see is a big old black blob. Would you like some more light? Would you like more light? Let's see if I can give you some. Um, is this the camera? Yeah. <laughs> Everything's labeled as pattern. Did that help? I didn't see any difference. The jeans are underexposed. Yeah, they look really, they, I can't tell because of the light behind it. Let's try a little more. What do you guys think? Actually, let's do this. Ooh. Oof. Wait, is that better? I can't see you guys, sorry. Does the cam the screen is this big on my end? Hmm, it's so dark. It looks really dark to me. Let's um do this. What do you think of that? <laughs> This is definitely not my ideal setup over here. Everything's kind of like, <laughs> all right, let's just put the buttonhole and we'll get back to our usual setup. How's that? All right, so my, right now I'm really concerned with my buttonhole and I actually meant to look at all my jeans in my um, closet to see if there was like a really consistent placement because I think I read somewhere that it should be half inch from the center front edge right here, you know? So let's see, I have a ruler right here. That's a half inch, what the heck? Oh, no, this is, I was going to say, yeah. Okay, so we have our half inch right here. I like to make this a little longer than you need because when this is under the presser foot right here, I can't see, um, like if I only made the mark as this wide, I wouldn't be able to see it. So I like seeing it past that. I, I don't know how else people do it, honestly. So yeah right joy you're so you're so right good point yeah it's a little better is it not would you like more black man it's tough okay so then i'm going to mark the um width of the button like this now you have to take in consideration the thickness of your button and the length of your button so I think I'm gonna focus on making my buttonhole about the exact same size as the button and the bar tacks at the end being on the outside of it. So the whole slit is that length and I'm gonna do a trial on fabric. And then I'm also going to mark where I want it right there. I'm gonna go past as well, okay? Let me get my trial fabric. 
that I forgot to bring over here. All right, so let's let's do the same thing on here and try. Let's try a trial, right? All right, so we're just gonna. Really, I'm just looking for the length of the button right now for this trial. I do have a buttonhole um, setting on my machine, and I also have the kind of buttonhole that's the keyhole with the little like loop at the top. That does not work very well on my machine anymore, and I, I have to say um, it didn't it didn't work that great before. Yeah, do you want me to lighten it up a bit, Walter? Let me. I'm going to. Let's see if we can get it to do it a little bit better. I don't have the overhead light over here. Drag. I just don't even see anything happening. Oh yeah, that's, right? What do you think of that? Try not to get your eyeballs blinded by the machine. <laughs> All right, so let's, I'm gonna leave the jeans on there so that the stitching is, or the um, brightness isn't so bad. So let's just, I'm just gonna try my little sample here first. Oh, okay. My bobbin just fell right out. Rude. That hasn't happened in a really long time. It felt weird when I put it in there, so maybe that's why. Let's see here. Where you need the light is under there. Am I right or what? Let's uh, sew a little bit. Make sure it's all happy. It's this one right here. Yeah, okay, cool. Now we're set. All right. A little bright, I know. It'll be better on the denim. <laughs> what? Oh, this fabric? Right. <laughs> yeah, because I cut off that leg for the pat for this the fabric for this right here. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I feel like these are so hippie California. I don't know why you guys are all New York. Before I cut this, let's see if it matches what I'm hoping to do right there. Right there is where I stopped kind of helping it a little bit. I got hung up. All right, so this is about the same length, but I feel like the bar tack ends are just outside that, and that's, that is kind of what I'm looking for because I really want the button to fit into this hole. So let's see if it will fit into this hole. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. It fits just perfect and buttonholes get a little stretched out. So there's no problem getting it in there. It's tricky because it's not attached to something so I'm trying not to lose it. All right, so we like this. Let's double check what, I wanna visualize where these things are. So the bar tack end is like kind of centered over the edge of this line, wouldn't you guys say? Move down on screen, oh, 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 sorry. I'm sorry, my face is in the way. Let me move my face over. Is that better? Yeah, yeah, okay. So here's my buttonhole right here. And so this is the markings. And so I feel like these bar tack ends are kind of, the bar tack is kind of centered over the edge of my chalk, right? 
like this. See that? And so here's me buttoning it. A little awkward because it's not attached to anything, but it goes through just fine. Okay. Let's go for it. Best part about jeans, you only have one buttonhole. And it's not set until you cut it. So now I'm gonna move my camera again. I mean my me. Yeah. Alright you guys, let's do it. Just using a regular button hole. Um, she goes over a lot about how the keyhole style buttonhole is really handy for this kind of button. And she's absolutely right because the post of this is so big. That's really nice when you have those buttonholes that are shaped like this to kind of hold this little, this big shank, right? Because right now, my buttonhole, the button is all buttonhole is always going to be spread apart you see that these things are slicker than snot okay there you go see how wide that is so now my buttonhole is always going to be stretched apart and so what she's saying is if you have the kind of keyhole buttonhole that has the little hole when it sits there in that hole the buttonhole doesn't spread apart it's got a place to go you know Yeah. So, um, make it brighter like I just said. Did I, is it not bright enough right now? Is it not bright? It's really bright. How's that other? Does it look okay? I'm just going to do this one buttonhole on the black. It's good? Okay, okay. All right, let's do it. So I just don't like my keyhole buttonhole on my machine. Um, there are ways to do a hand buttonhole. You can cut your buttonhole by hand and then just embroider the edge. It sounds terrifying, you guys, but think about it. When you're hand sewing, you get one stitch at a time. You get complete, complete control over it. So it's not that bad. In fact, when I had that one buttonhole on that t-shirt, um, oh, is it the Melolo? Not t-shirt, but the shirt, the Melolo. On the stand, I cut a little bit of the threads on the buttonhole itself. And so I went back with the same thread and I just embroidered around the edge of the buttonhole right there to reinforce it and actually look nicer than the rest of the buttonhole. So, you know. All right, let's do it. Okay, where my needle goes in is always kind of a different than where I think it's gonna be. So I'm gonna make sure that my, my pants are not pulling on the needle of the machine, it's all up on the table here. And I'm also gonna help my machine kind of guide it through a little bit if it needs it. If I feel like it's not pulling anymore, I'm definitely going to. I'm not doing anything right now. This is where I sometimes feel like I need to kind of nurse it along a little bit. Can you see all my chalk lines right here are almost obscured, unfortunately. So I'm kind of looking where that start stop was. There it is. And now I'm good. It looks, that looks good. A brave, oh yeah, yeah, that's so smart, Rachel. Rachel, it was you that was saying the crisscross um, belt loops in the back, right? Yeah, yeah, this looks pretty good, you guys. All right, let's clip all our threads. Let's go install some hardware and get back to our other camera setup, all right? Okay, I'll be right back. It's this one, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs>
microphone, camera. I think it's about right there. Let's see. Wire clippers, hammer, padding, mouse scissors. Ah, it helps stop the gapping. Well, I'm hoping my curved waistband is going to um, prevent that. Oh, wow. Look at that. I almost nailed the... <laughs> almost nailed that. Perfect. Yeah, that's... that's I love it. Cross, cross. <laughs> Why does an autocorrect know crisscross, you know? So let's bring this up a little bit right here. Oakley doakley, I have my overhead light over here. So I hope I, I hope I don't have trouble with these rivets. I'm actually gonna try the rivets first because I've never done the this style before. Um, where the um, post usually the post is a different color, so I'm worried it's gonna be too soft. Um, that way, if these don't go well, I have ba I have a backup set, and I haven't put a tack button that won't match those. <laughs> so um, you're going to need an awl. I like to protect my surface, and this is just a bunch of layers of stiffener that I just threw together. So that's all it is. Um, you don't need an anvil. Um, I rarely use one, only when I'm on camera and I want to protect my machine table. So p where your rivets go is up, totally up to you. In general, they go um, right here, right here. So the beginning and the end of your pocket, or at least just right here, not there. And then usually there's just one on the back pocket and I think it's right here. So it's like four minimum, two on each side. You can go overboard. You can put them here, here, here. You know, you could put them all kinds of places. So. Um, what I have found is I just kind of keep it simple just to kind of give it that professional look. So we'll do this one first and you use the awl to kind of position it. Now remember the rivet doesn't sit right on that seam, right? You, you need the hole like right about there. So let's see here. Let's, I'm going to poke it in from this side. I don't know why I'm trying to poke it from the back. It doesn't matter if you poke it from the top. It's about right here. I, tr I don't really want to break my thread there. All right, so I'm making a nice good hole right there. Um, I'm going to do it from the uh, both sides, mainly because I'm going to poke the um, post up this way. So I want the hole that I'm creating to be easy to slip that post into. I am not an expert at doing these, you guys. I kind of started doing these in the last year for the first time myself. I had, it'd been a long time. We had a machine that did this at work. <laughs> it was a kick press. <laughs> and I would just hand it to someone and be like, would you put these on my jeans for me? <laughs> so, all right, so there's my um, post there. Now, once you have it on there, you're gonna now determine how much of that is might sit above this guy, right? So I'm gonna line it up there. And look at how much of that point would sit above this. It's quite a bit. So you're gonna lop it off, right? You're just gonna cut it off. Make sure you have safety goggles on because that thing just went flying. Skull rivet. Ooh, how fun. See, I've never seen these. Look at that, it's hollow in there. I'm a little nervous about these. So let's see. Um, I'm going to use the, um, what's this thing called? The anvil, uh, mainly so it gets it up off the table, which is nice. All right. And then you're just going to whack. Wait, wait, do you whack up from the, you whack from the bottom, right? Wait. <laughs> right? <laughs> like this. Okay. Let's hope. Oh yeah, that doesn't look so good. Look at that. It went right through. Um, where's my... Uh... So 
I, I don't think I've ever taken one of these off. Are they easy? Are these hard to get off? I usually don't have a problem. Wow, I may have to leave this. All right, so I think what I could have done there, maybe not tapped so much. It doesn't look really bad, but it's definitely, I've, I've never had one look like that before. So, oh well. Let's try this one over here. Let's try it again. Usually the ones I use, when you clip it, it's a solid post inside. It's not hollow. And so did you see what happened was because of the hollow edge, it had a sharp edge all the way around. That's what went through my rivet. So um, it wasn't smooth and solid and filled inside. It's kind of a bummer when you get to this point, you don't really, you know, want to feel like, oh, I just did all this effort, my jeans turned out great, and then I ruined them with rivets. You'd cry by now. <laughs> It'll be fine. <coughs> I'll get it off. I can clip it with the wire cutters and, and, and then it'll be fine. So yeah, so I'm gonna look at this again. Let's trim a tiny bit more. One went that way, one went that way. <laughs> They're really easy to cut. It's pretty soft. Oh, I don't know if I should do that though. Ooh, I'm not gonna use this one. I kinda got a little spooked and I was like, maybe I should do a little bit less. Let's see. We had a lot better time the last time we did this, didn't we? On the ginger jeans. I bought a lot of these um, rivet and tack button kits from closet case patterns and um, from Blackbird, and they're really great, just so you know where to get them. I'm not worried about it, Lisa, honestly. I mean, I, I have practiced this before a lot. Um, I just hadn't done this brand before. Maybe you're right, though. I'll find those someday. Okay, so I'm gonna tack a little less this time. Get my jeans to relax on here. Yeah, I do not like these. I'm not gonna use these. They, all that little, that circle does is, um, you're right, Lisa, I should have practiced, um, is uh, it serrates the edge of the rivet. I'll show you. Wow, I can't even get this rivet off of here. What the heck? It's not even on there. Wow. There we go. So can you guys see around the edge there? Right there? So the little... You don't... Yeah, don't use it. I'm not going to use this kind. All right, so that means... Um, oh, wait, wait, I want to throw that away. Let's see if I can get my other one off then since we got that one off. I just don't want to cut my jeans. I have a feeling I'm not gonna be able to get this one off. I may need help. Or I don't want to hurt myself on camera either. <laughs> All right, I'll leave this one and I'll get help doing that. Well, let me get my other rivet sets. Put those away. So now we get to pick what color. So I have, I have copper. I don't think I have any, let's see what I have rivets for. Oh yeah, so I have brass. I don't have enough brass rivets. I like the brass. I have silver, copper, two different kinds, dull and bright. 
And then what are these? What are these? These go with this right here. These. These are my options. Or I just put in two rivets and the brass. Let's see. Yeah, I only have two brass. No hollow rivets. It's better than Netflix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. All my jeans have the, this color right now. No wonder, right? I don't think I have any others, though. I think I'm going to go with this dull, not the bright. What does this one go to? Oh, I have silver. I don't think that would look good, though. Because I have the dark gold thread. No silver. <laughs> silver. This kind of goes with the thread. Let's do it. And see these um, have a silver thingy. I have so many of these. Lisa's right. I'm going to practice. <laughs> Copper, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's do it again. Poke it through. I measure how tall it is. I trim a little off. Round number two. That seemed like I think I trimmed too much that time. I think that one was a little short. Let's see. Sorry if that's really loud, you guys. Look at that. So sturdy. Looks so good. Looks official, too. Gosh darn you! Let's see. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get help with that. <laughs> do it when I'm not live on camera, right? <laughs> um, if you get the idea, though, that's going to it's gonna look good when they're there, though, right? All right, so we already have a hole on this side. Let's do this one. Yeah, these are nice. I think uh, wh whoever does the, like uh, the ones from Closet Case and Blackbird are the exact same. The red tool, these are um, wire cutters. See, These are little miniature pliers. I am not a beater, but I have these couple of things from when I used to do some zipper pulls for chicken boots. These are a little thicker than the test. What I look for is like the edge is, is the same around. This looks pretty good. That color looks good with the thread, you guys. Right? My dress is all higgledy piggledy. Um, put them um, on the one pocket here. I think I'm just gonna throw these away. I'm gonna save my buttons. Am I gonna save my buttons? <laughs> I'm gonna save my buttons and I'm gonna throw away the rivets. I don't mess around, you guys. Don't ever bring your spools of wooden thread near me. I'll just throw them in the garbage. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, and then these I'm going to see this this right here looks like that like I don't think this is the right thing with this because look they have a ridge on them this is this right here is supposed to go to the rivets bedazzle those back pockets no <laughs> All right, where do we want this? We want this like right here, right? Kind of centered in the hem. Yeah, I got mine just at a beading store, those wire cutters. Yeah, sorry, I didn't see that, your question, Ray. Um, uh, yeah, it was just like a beading store in my little town, you know? like a hobby beading store, um, really nice one. They, they were really into it. And that's where I got those. They had a, they have a few uh, like price ranges and I think that those were like the $20 pair. They last for a really long time. If you're not gonna use them a lot, then you can probably even get a cheaper pair. But wire cutters come in all shapes and sizes um, for different things. Okay, so this one I'm just gonna do a little bit, just a tip because it's pretty thick right here with the pocket on there. Ooh, we're almost done, you guys. And then I can start fretting about that video that got lost yesterday. So let's talk about backup plans because I feel like this step really scares people. Um, and let's talk about worst case scenario. Like we just saw kind of the worst case scenario. And um, let's turn off the machine. Um, and I think like a lot of us hesitate to do these things because we're a little nervous about like it going wrong, myself included, you know. But you guys um, pushed me. You know, and it's great. It's it's great, you know. So, in a way, I feel like it's not the end of the world if it doesn't go well, you know. Like, what's the absolute worst right now that could happen? I can't get that rivet off and it doesn't match my other rivets, right? Is that, that That's not the end of the world. Do you think anyone's going to notice that? I mean, when we, when we meet, you know, we'll know, but you guys aren't going to tell on me, right? So it's not that big of a deal. And I actually do think I can get that off no problem because I have done it before. <laughs> I just don't really want to do it because it's so flush to the fabric. You see that? It does look cute on my shelf. <laughs> that came in the, the needle sharp box. I had no idea we were getting it. I was when I opened it. I was like, "Why is this so heavy?" I was like, "Oh, how special!" It's so funny how this really sits things on there, you know. But it's it's on there. All right, let's see how it looks. Let's look at this side. What do you guys think? I'm not gonna, I don't know if I'll add one there. I feel like I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna add my tack button, which means I'm gonna cut my button. You guys think you guys like that? That's right, Rachel. Right, I know. So that's what I want you guys to tell yourself if you're like, what if this fails? Like, the worst thing is you don't get the rivet in there and now you've punctured a hole in your jeans and you just have a hole sitting there, right? Now, that for me would be the worst thing, but I'm confident you can get a rivet in there. Um, I really am, like it's really not that hard. Just practice, like Lisa said, buy extras. You don't need, you need I, I'm putting four on this pair. You get like 20 in a package, okay? So, um, I feel like, this kind of step really makes your jeans feel like legit, but it's not necessary. 
But I wouldn't want you to not try it just because you're scared it might not work out. Yeah, that's true, Rachel. I forgot about screw-on rivets. Good point. Thank you. They are not reusable, so if you if you mess up, um, you can't use them again. We're not doing this because it's cheaper, you guys. All right, tack buttons I've put on about 50 million because the, on one of my products at Jigga Boots, we closed the case with a tack button. Um, these things either go well or they don't, and that's what I've learned, right? So, yeah, what did Julia say? Oh, for the beading tools, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's see here. So my idea right now with my button placement is to put it like right. Okay, so the, right there is where you think it would go. Who's got the pie? Why is this so thick right here? Feel how thick that is, you guys. I mean, you can't feel it, but <laughs> I don't have my my buttonhole's not cut yet. I'm about to do that. So that's where. Um, that's where I would normally line it up if this, say this were, were a shirt, would be right here. And that is, that is exactly what I did on my, um, trial pair. There you go, Rachel. Bedazzling solves everything, huh? So, okay, yeah, so let's talk about that again. Like, if you, if you punctured a hole with your all or whatever, and now you have this little all that a little hole that like you can't repair because it's just too hard so this is what I would say I would say do an X of stitching right there kind of decorative over your hole like this in this thread little tiny X instead that would be really cute and it would look normal and we've seen that before you know and and then you don't have a hole there anymore so that's your backup plan stitch something there or you know when you, you can squish it together with your fingernails and kind of steam it and it'll probably look pretty good after a while after you washed it a couple times it'll probably go back so all right so here is um my hole um let's let's cut the buttonhole i do now have a buttonhole cutter specifically because i did a jean jacket and the buttonhole, I could not cut the buttonhole, not even with my seam ripper. This thing is sharp. This is the sharpest thing in my office, hands down. <laughs> but look how nice that is. Looks really good, but I'm still going to rough it up. Because one thing I don't like is when little threads fly out of my buttonhole. So let's see if it works. It feels tighter, you know, but oh no, it's perfect. Perfecto. Okay. So this is where I wanted my, that's where I think it would go naturally, but I'm going to go past that. I'm going to go past this and I'm going to line this up as if it's curved. So you always line up your button, not in the center of your buttonhole, but at the end of your buttonhole. You're the Vaseline queen. That's awesome. So I'm going to go a little bit past, but not much like right here right there yeah you could totally use a chisel that's great um i looked for one in our 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 garage because i thought we had some and they were they were like this long i was like yeah it's not gonna work look how dark my hands have gotten because of the dye all right so i've punctured my hole i never actually did that i usually cut a hole with my screw punch now this piece is um threaded so you do need a hole here and it will get caught on your fabric fibers so i used to use a screw punch to get that little hole there so look at that um there you go you don't trim this one do not trim this one now you want to hit it from this side and this is this one's a little squirrelier in that you're going to center this over the hole push put it on there and now what you really want to try and achieve is that this post and your button are straight up and down not at an angle and it's a little awkward because look it's it's wiggly see it's not in there yet you don't want to 
hit it from this side because you might hurt your button. So what I like to do is I hold the fabric down like this. I kind of spread it out and hold it down like this so then it keeps it straight up and down. And then I try and hit it straight up and down, not at an angle, but straight up and down, okay? And I kind of tap it in to get it seated and then I whack. And then I'm gonna look and see so you might want to, when you've done a couple of the little taps and you've got it kind of seated, check it then to see if it's a little crooked and then try and correct it if you can. If it's a little crooked, you're not going to probably notice it, but it's really easy for this to go poop and be like sloppy and sitting like this. And then you can, if you haven't tapped it all the way in, you can't correct it at that point, but you can slip your wire nips under there and snip and cut this off and throw it away and try with a new one, okay? I'm really good at tack buttons. We've so, like, we had to put in so many and like the, I would buy the exact same one every, every time and like the quality would change and I would notice. That's how many I've done in there, so. So just the things to think about are getting it straight up and down, the post straight up and down, tapping it straight up and down. Once you've got a couple of those little threads kind of engaged in the post, then check it, you know, like I, I just go for it because um, I find when I move it, sometimes I it will get a little wiggly, but I feel like that's a good point to be like, it'll reassure yourself to keep going or to kind of correct things if you see things going awry or clip it off and try it again. Usually you get a few in a package. You only need one button per pants. So we're, we're done. <laughs> it's kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> Hubba hubba. Well, now I want rivets right there. Yeah, let's put rivets there. I want to see the rivets from the front, right? Right, right. I just don't want them to look too Western, you know? Yeah. Good. Not everybody has a screw punch, um, but I don't really feel like it would be appropriate for this application because those are typically used for papers, not fabric. I use mine for fabric. Yeah, Jan, absolutely. Yeah, I have, I, like once I got the hanger rivets, I haven't had any trouble with it until today, but that was actually a brand I'd never seen or type. I probably should have tried them out on the scrap, you know? All right, here we go. I like how these kind of snap on. I don't know if it's because of the cut edge. I'm kind of sitting, I'm doing it on the edges. You can never do this on the button, but I just want all the edges to be flush. That's why I'm doing it that way. There's some really great videos on how to do this, like on the Closet Case website. Maybe the Ash Jeans website has one. She might most likely, I don't know. I haven't actually visited her website, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> From Megan Nielsen Patterns, you know? She might. She might have some really good advice about this. You can do it too someday. <laughs> I'd never done this until this year. Everybody's doing it, so I'm like, oh, I can do that. Right? That's how I felt about childbirth. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be able to do this, so it's gonna be fine. <laughs> That's what I told myself. A little hard near the waistband. The waistband thickness is kind of disrupting the hammer a little bit. Like, look at that. It got a little bent right there. So let's see if we can kind of correct it. Looks a little better. 
Now my ribbons don't match. Look at how messy that thing is. This is just, it just, it's unfortunate. But I have better pliers at home that can pull that off. So. Cool. All right. So. Let me move all this junk out of the way. Hammer. And do our little do do do. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. Not bad. They look like real jeans. Oh, that is awesome. Snaps on a blessy. I have never done that. Not since like I was 20. <laughs> I'd be really nervous about that because those have all the little like grabby things, don't they? <laughs> Ooh, Rachel, that's right. You're getting this, this uh, pattern. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm hoping that the part one video hasn't been lost for good. I don't know why YouTube started streaming it again today um, and I can't find it on there. So I'm really sorry. I haven't found the link yet, but I will post it when I can on the SoSo.Live website where the project notes are. And I'll put my project notes up there soon once I've done this. Um, yeah, grommets are easy to ruin, Lisa. I have done that same thing and I was like, why do I want to do this? They're great for like signs though. You're welcome, Jilly. Thanks for hanging out. So um, these were the Ash Jeans, my Megan Nielsen patterns. My, my zipper does not match my buttons, but you know, we know why. Um, I'm gonna probably go through and trim little threads I find here and there. I get a little, like, that's one of my little obsessive things I do. <laughs> they look really good. I'll do a home sew catwalk. I'm gonna add a tack button to my, my jackrabbit pair. We have two pairs that, we, that I made. I made these off camera the other day. I did a half inch seam allowance on this waistband and you can see how much different it is in width. This one's five eighths, this one's half inch. So it should only be a quarter of inch difference. Uh, it looks a little more than that. <laughs> I must have done three eighths. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna put a button and buttonhole on next. And yeah, exactly. I'm gonna put that over there because of the my non-locking dumb zipper that I accidentally put in there. <laughs> yes, yeah, thanks guys. Yeah, these turned out really great. This was my um, needle sharp box. And I got a magical booty, thanks to Malin's suggestion of Harry Potter, lightning bolts. <laughs> Bye, Mata. Go to sleep. Thanks for coming, you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I know my schedule's a little off. Like I'm streaming on the correct days, but I'm usually sewing part one today and part two on Saturday. So we've been kind of dragging out this process with the ash jeans. We did a muslin, a prototype. We did some fitting. We cut these. We sewed these in two parts. Um, so Saturday, oh my, my, um, I just lost my live chat. On, um, on Saturday, I'll be doing the Scout Tea by Grain Line Studio. And um, uh, we're gonna be cutting them first. So I have a feeling that, um, let's see. I have a feeling that, I haven't even picked out my fabric for that yet. Oh, there, there, I can see the chat now. I went to a different page. Um, I don't even know what fabric I'm gonna do, but I would like to do a um, scalloped hem. So, and I'm thinking I'm gonna do that scout tee with this, my jackrabbit pants for my high school reunion. So, so thanks so much for coming, you guys. I really appreciate it. And um, I will see you on Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Please subscribe if you like um, what you see here. We stream three times. So my husband a pea coat down the road. He would do. You, do you want a pea coat? Terry's making one too. <laughs> I have been making my husband some things here, but um, he does not need a pea coat. We live in Hades as far as the weather goes. Sorry to tell you that. So, yeah, but thanks for the suggestion. And I will be making some coats. So, they're coming. They are coming. So, <laughs> all right, you guys. Thanks so much for coming. I really appreciate it. And you guys are awesome. I really appreciate that you're here. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Bye. See you guys soon. Take care. <laughs>